Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what are we doing here? <laughs> Where is group? Where are the group rules? Here they are. Wait, is this from the last one? Yes, it is. Where's the... Uh... find where the rules are. supposed to do about that Is it even hiding do 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 Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, we're just going to have to make do. Versus Collaroo, Fleur versus Legoman, Fleur versus Melvin, and then QQ versus Heartseed and QQ versus Studios. And that should be it. So I see no reason not to just go through from top to bottom. Let's start with Fleur versus Collaroo. Group B. And I think the rules are, the rules are something about not allowing, um, I think it's no mole, no snake in group B. It's not about allowing units. Anyway, I've got to quickly add to my spreadsheet, which is desperately in need of an update. So we got a badger for Fleur. And we've got Wolf Fox for Collaroo. Squirrel, Lizard, Pigeon, Falcon, Skunk, Badger against Lizard, Falcon, Cam, Wolf, Fox, Balloon. Uh, Collaroo doesn't have a great map. This is a, an annoying P2 
place to try and attack if Fleur takes this mill, can set up on the high ground and then Colliery is trying to come up up through the hill and the water at the same time. He's taking this, it's not quite a ninja expansion and he gets scouted early. Colliery can walk around here and because there are no moles allowed you don't have to worry about Fleur just putting one or two more warrens over here and instantly sniping that mill. Flirt instantly with a badger. Colourou has scouted that. Mass lizard might be an answer. But he needs more mass lizard than this. He needs to basically sell everything and then replace like twice as many. Because there's no way you can attack into um, even numbers of squirrels with lizards and defenders advantage against you. Like, it's not going to work. And Kolaru is sort of not really doing anything with this massive... Like, once you see your opponent place down a fast tier 3 like that, you know you've got like a minute and a half where you're fine to do whatever you want. And Kolaru hasn't really used that. It looks like he's just going to take a bunch of mills and go for a base race. Which, to be honest, is not the worst idea. Um, but he still needs more lizards to pull it off. Because at the moment, uh, well, Fleur could just take his squirrels out and leave his badger here or vice versa. And at the moment, in a straight fight, Colliru gets crushed. Well, as soon as that badger comes out. He could go in there and would have killed, um, but he didn't. A lot of farms on this mill, which I think is probably a mistake. I don't think there'll be enough time for uh, these farms to actually start making themselves valuable. Okay, Fleur is coming in, so this is Colliru's chance to move around and attack. He's being kind of indirect about it though. There are only two mills up for Fleur at the moment. Fleur does have his own lizard, so he does have his own like quick response units. But Colliru is basically all about trying to avoid a straight fight here. That's a stupid mill to take. He's got a good map for trying this strategy because there's a lot of ways he can run his lizards around. But he needs to get in and destroy all three of these and he's getting cornered. And as soon as this actual fight happens, I don't see it there's any way that he wins. Colliery's losing a lot of his infrastructure, he's lost eight farms, and he doesn't have enough to actually clear out this mill. He's cleared out everything else. Okay, Colliery still has like an army that's a threat. Fifteen lizards is enough to jump on a farmed mill. Especially considering this is close to following. It's going to be much harder for Fleur to actually step off his mill. And he's going to have to sell down on units to actually start ecoing here. So Colliery definitely still has a chance. Hey Jason. I think this is a mistake. Okay, Colliery agrees with me. Fleur having his own lizard is really hindering Colliery's progress. 
Like, it, the fact that Fleur has some sort of units. Because the lizards, his, Fleur's lizards don't need to beat Colliery's lizards. They just need to hold him off until the badger can arrive. And that's what they're doing. And it looks like, oh, Colliery's lizards nearly got caught there. This is, um, I think it, was it Heartseed who played a lot like this? Oh, oh, hang on. That badger nearly gets picked off. Oh, but Fleur quick to respond, hides it within his own unit. That might be GG. Colliery lost a lot of lizards there for not much benefit. I mean, Colliery has a significant eco advantage, but he's losing units quickly enough that it's not re it's basically just keeping him even. If he can get up to like 30 lizards, get another four lizard warrens down and fully built, then he can probably jump onto this army. But nothing short of that is going to work. And you can see that Flo is getting more comfortable prodding. Okay, and now Fleur is going to be taking this. This mill should get up in time before... I mean, if this one goes down though, that's still all of his farms. This mill is going to come up before this one goes down. Yes, the mill goes up. And the mill goes down, so Fleur... Sh Colour shouldn't surrender here. He's lost a lot of stuff, but... Fleur is starving. He can put down mm, mills quickly though. But still, Colaru has a shot. He has a real shot of making this happen. He's continuing the harassment. This is what Fleur needs to be doing. He needs to be splitting up his army so some stay to defend. Because it's hard for Colaru to just jump on this, as, especially now that he's lost his army. And all these warrens going is actually not that good for Colaru. Okay, and now Colaru's losing his one farming base. Honestly, if the lizards were here, that badger could get picked, could have been picked off. But I think this is GG now. Colaru's army gets caught out. He's got no farms. He can only get up to nine lizards, and he can't even get up to that with his funds. There's just... Fleur can just sit on this base and defend it. That's point one to Fleur. Okay, so game two. Fleur sticking with the badger, Colliery sticking with the wolf. Fox. Let me just put those down. Okay. We've got squirrel, lizard, pigeon, falcon, skunk, badger against squirrel, falcon, cam, wolf, fox, arty. Now I do love seeing the arty coming out, especially from Colaroo, because he was running the arty before it was cool. It's how he made his name in the in the scene was by being the uh, the arty guy um, but the badger is really good at countering artillery because it can shoot on the artillery while dodging its shots and the arty cannon doesn't actually have much health like if you can actually start attacking it you're probably going to kill it pretty quickly So, map-wise, another terrible map for Colaru. He has to expand all the way over here. Fleur's isn't great, but this is a lot closer. And this one is so inconvenient for Colaru to reach that it's practically a safe mill. 
Still, if Kolaru can expand over here and get an arty down, then he's basically securing the map. He can put pressure on this mill from all the way over here. And he can try and shut Fleur down to just this corner. Which maybe he'll be able to even attack. But first it becomes a matter of can Kolaru actually hold this? He should be able to with the way Fleur's sold his army to do the classic sell and replace. Colliru trying to get his own tier 2 up. Fleur going for a quick badger again. Colliru does scout it. How much does Fleur see? Everything. So what's Colliru going to do here? Arty? And he's not really doing anything at the moment. And that's bad. It's a waste of time, which he doesn't really have. He's got 45 seconds until that badger is out. <coughs> Alright, there's the RT. He's also investing heavily in this mill. He's going to need a lot of falcons to fight the badger, but he's going to need cams to fight the squirrels. Or I guess the uh, arty might be able to handle that, but I don't think Kolaru has the army to actually hold this with or without the arty. Like I said, the arty it doesn't do great against badger comps because it will target the badger, the badger will move, and then the arty will hit nothing. Colliver even trying to get his own tier 3 out, but it's so late. And this is why I thought it would have made more sense to build on this corner. So you could, like, because I think an arty on that corner would be able to hit this mill. Colliver, you can't leave this. You can't leave this mill uncontested. But you can see the badger just calmly walking past all those shots. And then there's too much tier 1 for these falcons to handle. And that means the falcons can't do anything to the badger. And the badger just walks over everything here. And once this falls, it's just going to snowball. Fleur takes game two. Can Kolaru get a point back? So same tier threes, basically same armies. for a fast lizard. One fast lizard warren. Um, doesn't usually work. Like Fleur scouted it quickly as well. You'll have time to respond. I don't think Colliery will be able to do anything with this. Now if you get one lizard, if you get a pig in the right place, if you get a corner pig that's far out, then one lizard can kill it. But it needs to be somewhere where only one, where only the one pig can hit it. And honestly, I don't even know if that still applies. Um, that was in a previous patch. I don't know if the numbers still work out in the lizard's favour. So you can see Kolaru here is actually falling a bit behind in eco. 
Not hugely, just a bit slower to get up to seven farms. Although they'll get to wait at about the right time. Okay, so Collar is just the one going for the tier 3 first this time. Does get scouted. Now you've got to be careful here because lizards aren't great on the defence. Um, so you're much more susceptible to being pushed. But it doesn't look like Fleur's going to do that. Fleur's just going to fully saturate his second mill. Which is a fair response against the fox. Because the fox needs time to build up value. It doesn't just do one push and it's over like the badger does. So, um, these farms will have time to get up and they'll have time to, you know, start pumping out squirrels and then just the sheer mass of tier 1 can overwhelm the uh, fox army. Especially since the fox is supply blocked. Colliru needs to go back and sell a lizard warren. Which he does. Ballsy mine. Colliru gets away with it though. But look how much tier 1's coming out. And it's not just squir squirrels, it's lizards as well, which can actually chase down the fox much, much better. They they have swift as well. So good that Colliru's sticking with the um, eco. He's holding his own there. And if he micros well, he can kite Fleur's army and do serious damage to it over time. But he needs to, uh, you know, not have his lizards completely standing out there where they can be just ambushed. Okay. Fleur hits all of the mines, but it looks like it might not matter. Like, Colony just has no answer to Mass Tier 1 yet. He's trying to get the cams up. But lizards aren't good on the defense. Colour has lost four, five, six farms, multiple warrens. His cam does one of the cams does get out, and that will help a lot. But the fox just fires too slowly to sort of overcome this mass tier one mob. But it does get repelled finally. Colliru is down on army and on eco. So he needs to keep on shooting. He needs to not give Fleur a chance to rebuild. Like when you get ahead with Fox, you need to stay ahead with Fox. Is Colliru going to try and go for some sort of base race here? I don't think that will work. He has a whole extra mill to go through. It looks like he's got his army sandwiched now. This fox is going to die. This fox is running towards the reinforcements rather than away from them. And that looks like, yep, Fleur makes a nice clean sweep. 3 0. I think Colliru could have done that if he'd focused more on the tier 1. If he had enough tier 1, 
to beat Fleur's army once, then he could have kept. Then he could have done some serious damage with the fox, either by shooting the farms or by not letting the army rebuild and shooting units as quickly as they come back up. Um, but he focused more on staying even on Eco, which meant he just didn't have the army to defend once Fleur attacked. All right, so moving on to Fleur versus Lego. We got Squirrel, Falcon, Cam, Boar, Fox, Machine Gun against Squirrel, Lizard, Pigeon, Falcon, Skunk, Badger. Okay, so Lego Man, Lego Man, Lego Man, that is Boar, Fox, and Badger. So obviously with the snakes gone, snakes banned in this set, so it's much harder to deal with high health tier threes like the boar and the badger. The snakes are the main counter to them. Um, the fox kind of works because it does high single target damage, but it's obviously a lot more of an investment in itself. Um, fox boar should combo nicely together though. You've got the boar to deal with tier one and the fox to deal with high value single target units. But it is also, like mixing the fox with any other tier three, it drains the micro skills of whoever's playing it. There are very few players who can effectively micro multiple tier threes at once. I consider myself one of them, but that's because I've practiced with multiple tier threes a lot more than other players. I run it pretty regularly. Both players fully saturating. Lego Man going for a third base, but also putting down tier 3. Fleur floating a lot as well, so tier 3 from him, yep. happen until these tier 3s are built. They have been scouted. No, the uh, boar hasn't been scouted. He's going to see it now. Not coming in through there, he's not. They should be able to come around here. Even gets the third mil. Sees the fox and the boar. And scouts the tier 2s, so... Very effective scout by Fleur there. He's just going for double badger. Mm. And badger is a very, very well scaling unit. I think maybe the owl scales better than it, but I think it's the only unit that does. Because if you get up to 10 owls, then like, even badgers start having a hard time dealing with that, because 
there's just there's only so fast they can fire. Something like 10 owls versus 10 badgers would probably go the way of the owls. Dealing with just simpler numbers like two or three, um, the badgers should have this. But we'll have to see. And it also depends like how well these... Laker Man's clearly setting up these cams for some sort of trap. Um, We'll have to see how well that goes. He's not put any farms on his third base. His cam, ooh, one of his cams does get absolutely blasted. Okay, one of the badges is dead already. Fleur's taken his fight over the uh, machine guns. A second badger is fully revved but nearly dead as well. Ligaman's fox is uh, dangerously low but the second badger goes down, that's two tier three Fleurs lost, while Legoman's lost none. That probably means Legoman's gonna win. It's hard to come back from a 360 food deficit. But it's made easier by the sheer eco Fleur has. In a high eco game like this, um, losing tier threes is still bad, but it's not as bad. Hmm. <laughs> Can he stop this fox harassment? He can. Oh, not with just those tier 1s, though. Okay, yeah, he has very little of his tier 1 actually in position to fight this. If he had all his squirrels here, he could have killed those cams and then the fox would be forced away, but Legoman sort of realised he's got an opportunity to come in while there's nothing but tier 1 on the field. And the boar just eats that up. And Legoman goes one game ahead. Okay, same decks, same tier threes, different map. Okay, so quick expansion. No uh, tier one down yet. Hmm. Okay, Fleur not responding with his own mill. Both players have... I mean, Fleur has an easy second mill to take. But he's going straight for the Badger. This worked against Collaru. Lego Man will have better answers, though. But is Lego Man going to scout it? There shouldn't be enough in Fleur's army to actually stop the scout. Now that Lego Man's finally going for it. And so, yeah, he sees it. The badger gets about 20 seconds of building time. Okay, let me go for Fox. 
He really needs to be selling and replacing here. Okay, he does some. And Fleur finally gets his expansion going. I say finally, but that's a perfectly reasonable time to actually get it up. Like the sort of 250 mark. Ooh. Fleur sells the badger to go hard on Eco. Now, Legoman is probably not going to scout this. And Legoman looks like he's giving up this base. He's not putting any farms on it. He's put his defenses behind it. Doesn't look like he even is going to try and contest this mill, which I think is a... I don't know why he wouldn't. It's not any way less defendable than this one. Lego Man really needs to get the scout here. He needs to see that this has gone completely unscouted. Lego Man is still expecting the tier 3 coming out. Okay, Lego Man scouts the mill. Doesn't scout the tier 3 was sold though. He needs to put his defenses up here and then he can like properly like start kiting with his fox and get some value and putting some machine guns to retreat to will prevent him from running in the same issue as Collaroo did and just getting run over by a mob of tier 1. The cams will help with that a bit as well but Lego man is running out of time. Fleur is on his way. The cams are not in position. Only one of the machine guns is up. The fox does get away. But this mill is going to go down. And now some warrens are going to go with it. The fox is dead. That looks like GG to me. All these warrens are dead. Fleur's arm is just reinforcing too quickly. Hey, Mocha. And that's one to one. Um, a good sell by Fleur. Good switch from tier three into tier one. Both players sticking with the same builds. So no early game shenanigans, plenty of, well, Lekker Man's got two mills to choose from for his expansion, and Fleur really only has this, um, and I expect to see him take it quickly. Yes, hello Mocha. Okay, another quick tier 3 from both players. Badger scouted by Lego. And Fleur scouting the Fox. But 
Fleur sells it again. It's doing the same trick. Will Legoman scout it this time? He should. He's coming in from the correct angle. There's no way Fleur's army can kill the commander. Okay, Legoman, you've seen the massive sell. You've seen the massive farms. Oh, he sells his own fox. That is not what I would have done. I would have kept the tier 3 and sold the cams. The fox is already building. Might as well get it out quicker. And then you can still eco or put down tier 1. Um, Legoman desperately needs more tier 1 at this point. Like, I don't trust two cams to hold against this many squirrels. Hmm. These machine guns aren't even in the right location. The cams aren't ready to fight. Okay. I, it looks like I'm underestimating these cams. A farm is going to go down. But it looks like Lego Man is going to hold here. Now, Lego Man's been able to build up his own squirrel count. He's got units on the right side. He should hold. But the problem is he can't really, like, build enough space to eco fully on this base. He also didn't quite have time to get all of his army ready. So, all of these trades are even, but they're even while Fleur's ahead in eco, so... Fleur is coming out ahead here. Although this might be too much. If Lego Man could just get up to his two cams again. If Lego could just get his two cams and his 18 squirrels up, he'd be in a good spot to hold. But Fleur's pushing, pulling back. He's going to put down a badger again. And I think this one will be for real. He stayed three farms ahead for... Um, like a solid minute, nearly two. Oh, the cams get sold. Now, that's not good because the cams currently counter the mass tier one. It is good because your opponent can't tell that the cams have been sold um, without scouting the warren. Um, like if Legoman were to sell all his squirrels. Fleur could just look at the army and see that there are fewer squirrels there and he'd know that they'd been selling. The cams, you can't do that. Um, it's a moot point though because Fleur scouts in far enough that he sees that the warren's missing. Fleur has built a second batch of warren, I didn't even see that. And neither has Lego Man. Lego Man has finally got this space fully saturated and built a third ready to go. But I don't think one fox is going to be enough to hold back two badgers. Especially not with this much tier 1 supporting it. Like the fox is just not going to be getting the shots where it needs to go. Lego still thinks it's just the one fox, one badger coming this way. He needs to get back. He needs to burrow back now. The army's not here, Lego man. Figure it out. There's only one other place for it to be. Okay, the badgers were allowed to rev up basically unchallenged because Lego man didn't have his army ready to go. The badgers are now fully revved. There's too much tier one in the way. These badgers are untouched. The mill goes down. Lego man is starving. 
I don't know what that machine gun is doing there. I wanted to comment on it earlier, but there was too much other stuff going on. And yep. That should just walk over and Melvin, no not Melvin, Fleur wins 2-1. Um, Melvin is coming up though. And I mean Fleur is probably a second favourite player, like by the numbers. Fleur is probably the second favourite in this group. Melvin is the favourite. Um, and he's proving it by flexing with a tier 1-less army. Ferrets, Falcon, Cam, Wolf, Wire, Machine Gun. Melvin, what are you doing, you madman? The rule, I f I'm pretty sure the rule is no snakes and no moles. Don't think the, the, the no tier one has anything to do with it. Problem is I couldn't find the post where it outlined the rules. Outlined? Laid out the rules. At least not for part two. Could only find it for part one. But that's what I remember it being. Um, I mean, with this map, it's hard for Fleur to push, and he probably isn't going to be expecting Melvin to skip Tier 1, so he won't be prepared for it. So it looks like Melvin is going to get his cams up, and cams can hold off the early game uh, push. They're very good at squashing low numbers of Tier 1. Um, and there's not an easy answer for Fleur here. He could probably go into his Falcons, but those are, even though the, fal the cams can't hit them, the cams can just do so much more, like walking around the map. And the falcons kill them too slowly that the, the cams would just be able to decloak on the pigs, kill a couple of them and decloak and get away. Um, the problem we see with comps like Melvin is uh, when you get to the actual fight your ability to reinforce is just hindered so much it takes a full 60 seconds no full 20 seconds for any of these to rebuild uh, so that's 40 seconds if you lose both of them and it's a full 60 food which is not nothing um, I mean you'll often see people go back and sell their tier 2 warrens or some tier 1 to get stuff re resupplied but when you're doing a tier 2 focused army you're you don't have a lot of warrants to sell so you can't even easily do that <sighs> so I'd like to see Melvin make this work but it's gonna be tricky there's not a real advantage gained by not taking any tier 1. At least, well, there's no advantage gained by taking only tier 2. If you cut tier 1 for, like, multiple tier 3s, then you're sort of giving yourself, um, you're sort of, you know, setting the standard that you're going to be going for a really late game death ball, win one fight super hard, and make the game all about that type of build um, but there is an advantage to it it's not consistent but there is a pro and a con I don't really see many pros to just going tier twos like this especially considering he's so behind on eco this is a very unusual play style for Melvin Melvin usually likes to play really defensively and really greedily 
Um, so it's amazing that he hasn't ecoed up at all, and we're nearing the five minute mark. He's, he's wanting to do it now. He went for the wolf first, but the wolf isn't going to be able to buff anything. Like, for an army comp this expensive, you need that eco, and Melvin's going to be trying to eco up on four farms, which is really hard to do. Because it slows down the rate at which you put farms down, which slows down the rate at which you get food back, which slows down the rate that you put farms down, which slows down the rate that you get food back, and etc, etc. I'm guessing he's going to plan, his plan is to just wolf buff these farms, these remaining farms, to get this space going, and uh, that seems like it's working, but he's still been behind an eco for uh, a minute and a half, looking like two. And he, I mean, I guess this is his third base, he can expand outwards here. This one is looking tricky, especially since Fleur's taken this base. But, if Melvin can actually start building up his ferrets, um, then he can put a lot of pressure on the mills. The problem is that's going to force a fight. And, I mean, six wolf buff cams is a lot. Is a lot of muscle. Um, and it's going to be very good at clearing out tier one. But 24 squirrels and 18 lizards. Uh, that's a lot of tier one. Okay, well the cams are going to run in. Quickly pop down this... This mill. It was empty, so it's only 60 food. But the cams do get away, and that's important. Okay, so Melvin's sort of forced to keep just building falcons and cams which are two units that go well together and they synergize well with the wolf so I can see what the plan is here I just don't think it's gonna work um, but Fleur takes a terrible fight there on the machine guns in a choke point like he got squashed between the um, between the mill and the machine guns uh, thing is, because he rebuilds so much quicker, it might be worth it to just trade armies. Because now he's going to be coming in while Melvin has nothing to defend with. Like, Fleur already has 30 units on the field, and Melvin has 5. Well, I guess 7 if you count the machine guns. And they are hitting above their weight due to the wolf. I think, I think Fleur's fine to come in here. And it looks like he finally agrees with me. Especially because the wolf can't go back and buff up the, the warrens to make them build faster. So Melvin trying to distract with the wolf, but yeah, he just he just can't rebuild the he just can't rebuild his army quickly enough. He has a massive tempo loss when they trade. Even though he technically won at the first fight, it didn't matter. Because he just couldn't replenish his losses quickly enough. So, let's see if... Has Melvin, like, lost a bet or something? Or is he just, like, BMing? Because this is another really weird build. So, going Squirrel, Owl, Wire, Mine, Machine Gun, Balloon. Whereas Fleur is basically just sticking with his very boring but very sensible army comp. Squirrel, Lizard, Pigeon... Falcon Skunk Badger. You know, three tier ones, two tier twos, one tier three. Classic. And Melvin going a five farm squirrel. That's very odd. Because this is too big a map for him to do any rushing on. Um, or to get rushed on. And there's no moles to worry about. So why not just eco up? Especially because you're Melvin and you are the eco guy. Like, Melvin is known for being greedy and for ecoing up heavily. Okay, he sells the Warren. I don't know why he put it down in the first place. Melvin is playing very strangely in these two games. I guess this kind of goes with his usual play style of 
Well, it goes to his stereotypical play style of being super defensive, wanting to eco up and take it to a long game, not doing anything before 16 farms. Like, the defences with the owls, you know, they all work with that. But that is kind of a stereotype of Melvin. It's not how he usually plays. Melvin is a lot more well-rounded than that. In actuality. Um, it's just that's how he likes to play. So yeah, we'll see how this works. I mean, to be honest, <coughs> Melvin's army has a real good chance of working. I know Fleur has a badger, um, but you can out-owl a badger. Um, it happens around the five or six mark, where the owls just start making too many mice. And because the badgers, um, if, you, if you get multiple owls, you'll get multiple mice that all hit different things. Where if you get multiple badgers, you'll just get loads of badgers shooting at the same target. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of the time you will. The badgers don't spread their damage as well. So it means that even though the badgers can clear up the mice quickly, there's so many of them that it's going to take them like a solid 30 seconds to do it. Even at full rev. And while that's happening, like the badgers are shooting the mice that are attacking them, but there's still like half the mice just attacking the mill and the warrens and the pigs and everything else. Like the badgers can't spread, they can't cover the area that the owls can. And that means that the owls do eventually just whittle down the badgers um, by undercutting all their support and building mice as fast as they die. So yeah, it's gonna take it's gonna take a lot of owls, but it can happen. And with this, it looks like Melvin's fine settling in on this these two bases. Um, ideally, for his build, you kind of want a third. But if he just devotes everything to the owl production, he can get up a lot of owls on just two bases. And because of the way this these bases are set up, he doesn't need to put much into defense. I mean. Uh, Fleur can attack through this one tile choke point, but quite frankly, just the barbed wire is enough to like see that off. So Fleur is probably going to have to come down here, where you can just stick a couple of balloons and basically guarantee the opponent can't come in. I don't know why so many of these, why he's guarding around here. Oh, there's a little pathway there through the water, but that's the stupidest way to attack, surely. Well, it certainly is now. I would expect Fleur to attack through here, this top route. That's the only logical path in my view. Um, and the defences don't really cover it at this moment. And it looks like Fleur's coming in soon. He's got his army up. He's probably going to wait for the second Badger. Probably. Taking two mills, which I expect means he's going to saturate one fairly quickly. Honestly, Fleur might feel comfortable enough to just sit back and just build up more badges. Because this is now starting to become very difficult to move in on. He's got a lot of skunks and he's got two badgers, so he can deal with the mice efficiently, but there's still, I mean, you see what I mean there? Like, that's still two skunks that died, just because the badgers couldn't kill all the mice quickly enough. But it looks like the second badger is managing to stay in. The balloon is down. I don't know why so many of the defences are over here instead of over here. I mean, this would not be a problem if the defences were over here. But it looks like there's enough there and enough continuous reinforcement from the um, owls that this badger is probably going to have to retreat. Oh, is it? It's not leaving empty-handed though. Or is it? 
There's one Aldo on 5 HP, and I know, like, Mega Man Blur is gonna want to kill it. Oh, but he's going round. He can just go round and get on the Warrens. Get on the Owl Warren? That's gonna be, uh, pretty... That's gonna be, a um, annoying for Melvin. He sells one of them. Now, I don't know if he can really push through here. Now that the balloons are actually, like, in range. But he is making his way. Like, there's three owls is not enough to overwhelm the badger. And especially not when Fleur's microing the badger so well. And this mill is going to go down soon. Yeah. Okay, Melvin is playing very, very oddly. Let's see if he continues that in game three, or if he is going to play normal. He's going to play normal. Okay, he's uh, apparently, apparently he thought Fleur was someone he could style on, and he was proven wrong. So now he's going back to what is a normal deck for Melvin. Badger Fox isn't the most common combination, and like I said before, um, it's very micro-intensive. Badger of Fox especially so, because they're both basically units that need to be babysat to get the most out of. Um, but Melvin is probably the best at running it. When I was saying about how there are very few people who I think are actually have the skill to run um, Fox and another tier 3, or Fox Badger or Fox Boar, um, well, I was mainly thinking about Fox Badger and Melvin. I was mainly thinking about Melvin running it. Still, mistakes do happen. Even with Melvin. Okay, so if Fleur gets a clean sweep over Melvin, that'll be a big upset. It would be just a regular upset. The fact that Fleur's won is just a regular upset. It will be a big upset if he completely 3 0s him. Oh, and speaking of upsets, I wonder how Fiji's doing against Wales. The Rugby World Cup is on today, so... Well, not just today, but I am trying to keep up with it, and it's 18-14 to Wales. I really hope Fiji wins this. It would make me feel better about us losing to him. Okay, so back to the game at hand. Badger Badger for both players. Although, I don't think... Yeah, Fleur hasn't scouted that. Is he going to? No, not yet. He's going to take the longer path around to avoid the DPS. And there, he sees it. So... Um... Fleur's Badger is faster. It's about 20 seconds ahead. But it shouldn't affect things too much. The time spent getting this Badger together with its army and getting it over to the front lines should give this enough time to rebuild. Uh, sorry, build. Okay, well, Fleur's, um, actually no, this badger's not going to get up in time. Fleur's going straight for it, and the path was a lot straighter than I thought it was. So yeah, or, or maybe this badger is just a bit late, which is a big deal. This badger's going to be revved up. 
It's also going to be injured. But that is a very unhealthy badger right there. So, one farm down, but Flood does have to retreat. Melvin is chasing. Melvin only lost his uh, squirrels there. They took the brunt of the impact. He did lose a farm as well, but it's only the one. He can overcome that. And he should. You expect him to have better badger micro. And yeah, his gets revved up and it survives. This is looking like a win for Melvin. It's hard to beat Melvin in a badger fight. That basically came down to better badger micro on uh, Melvin's part. He kept it revved up longer um, and he focus fired on the correct targets. Which moves us into group C. And I don't know, I think these are like the premiere maps, but I'm not entirely sure. Let's see, yes, a, no, no, this is a random map. So what is, is this just no selling? Anyway, it's an L for QQ and nothing for Heartseed. Okay, so no selling with defences is... I mean, defences are one of the first things you sell after a fight because they're, they're going to be useless to you when you're attacking. So you might as well sell them, replenish your army, and, use, and then take that army to go attack. Um, so using them in a no selling contest is difficult. But not impossible. And they still have value. Alright, QQ looking at coming in. Deciding against it. I'm putting down an owl. Quick owl. Relatively. Oh, wait. Okay, so those mines were sold, so... Maybe it isn't a no-selling? Maybe it's like banned units instead. I 
I don't think group C is no selling. I think that was like group E or something. It could be um, like no mole, no cam. I think there were two groups that banned units. Well, either way, let's see if Heartseed can make this work. They've both got toads, which is interesting. The owl is up. That's good for a Q kid. I mean, an owl is... The mice are going to be pretty useful against Heartseed's army. QQ's losing, going to lose a lot of warrants here. In fact, it looks like we might be going for a base race. In that case, QQ needs to commit. Take down this balloon quickly before the army gets back. Unfortunately, a lot of his units are hitting the mill. He is going to get his... Okay, he gets his owl out of there. Honestly, if he'd stayed and focused, with his, if he'd done some micro, he could have just won that fight. Um, bit of a misplay by QQ to retreat there, but he got the mill. He lost a few Warrens, but um, not too many, only a couple, and he kept the Owl alive, which is the main thing. Okay, so more Warrens going to get picked off on this flank, but QQ can just come straight for the mill here, and that's what he's doing. Right, Heartseed doesn't know about these mills. He should suspect. Um, I think this is a mistake by QQ to turn around. I think, honestly, he could just, like, go to the mill and click on it. And he needs to be focus firing those Falcons. Okay, is he going to get this owl out? He should. Yeah, he bows back. And the owl can just fly over all this difficult terrain. Okay, the ferrets get sold. That helps out QQ somewhat. Um, Eco-wise, QQ is ahead. And Heartseed is actually starving. He's not going to be able to resupply any of his units that he loses now. Whereas QQ's got infinite resupply with the Owl. And yeah, Heartseed doesn't even bother fighting out. Just surrenders. Good use of the Owl there. Um, QQ just about able to keep it alive. All right, so game two. Owl for QQ, no tier three for... Okay, so the rules for group C are no Liz, no Cam. in for Heartseed. Um, did he see a lot of machine guns last last game? I don't think he did. I don't think the defense has really played much role. And since you've got the ferrets anyway, um, you don't really need a dedicated siege unit. Of course, that's just one benefit of having the moles. The main use of them is um, having a tanky unit that's cheap and uh, can resupply on the front lines. The fact that they crit structures is sort of, I mean, it's kind of an afterthought. It's not completely useless because it lets them rush down the warrens so quickly and 
nullifies warrant tanking. Um, but I honestly think if you took away the structure crit, the structure crit from moles, people would still probably use them. Ah, oh, darn! Well scored. So what I'm excited about here is I'm hoping we get to see ferrets v ferrets. QQ and Heartseed are both like keen ferret players. They like the unit and they know how to get the most out of it. But this uh, squirrel mole push I think is going to be too much for the ferrets to handle. Focus down the, the Falcon. QQ, focus the Falcon. Hit the Falcon. Okay, he does it. He's going to lose his campfire, but he keeps his tier 2 alive while killing his opponents. So, worth. Ferrets are not contributing a lot. That machine gun goes down just as it comes up. It looks like this Falcon is going to get caught. No, QQ is not running. QQ is not using the roads. He just needed to take a step to his left, then he could have caught it. He does get one of the more ones, and he does end up killing the Falcon anyway. He's going to try and take this campfire again. Honestly, I kind of get it. It's it's kind of hard to take either of the mills at this point. Uh, this will keep his eco ahead of Heartseed. And in a tight game like this, that will matter a lot. Plus, it means he can set up forward defences. So, it makes sense why he wants it. <clears throat> um, the thing is, I just... His army's going to actually really struggle to hold. Unless he can get some good ferret connections. He got a uh, squirrel there. So, that's a start. But all of the juicy stuff is so far into um, so far into Heartseed's base that Kiki basically needs to win the fight to start hitting it. Of course, this is actually a really good start for Kiki. He's picked off one of the Falcons. He's done some. He's got some hits with the Ferrets, which means he's got the Tier One advantage. Now he can snowball, and yeah, Heartseed knows what what's waiting him. Once you go behind against Ferrets, it's virtually impossible to ever climb back out like ferrets are one of the best units in the game at um, keeping an opponent down and QQ is now 2-0 is he gonna get the get the sweep he's sticking with the owl it looks like neither player is really making any changes nope not you I'd say QQ has a map advantage here. Like this base for Heartseed is his only natural expansion. And the way it's set up with this high ground and cliff um, just in front of it makes it really easy for QQ to get ferret harassment done on it. So, plus if he goes through the water here, that will slow down the units, making it harder for them to dodge the ferret shots. 
Like, this is very bad terrain to be fighting against ferrets. Um, and unfortunately for Heartseed, QQ has ferrets, so... Yeah. Meanwhile, QQ has both of these mills he can easily take. He has a campfire he can easily take that's well protected this time. And he can even go for this sort of forward mill. And if he shuts it down, then he basically gains these two other mills as well. Um... QQ starting with a ferret and taking a forward mill. I don't know if he'll be able to hold this. Heartseed didn't scout the mill. So that's something. Means QQ's going to get his defences set up here. Before it becomes an issue. Like this isn't going to be pressured. And this is basically perfect. If you're trying a forward mill like this. You want your opponent to notice as late as possible. And, I mean, with this machine gun here, this mill is basically shut out. Unless Hartie can do his own ferret poking. He does have the, the falcons, so he's got high ground vision. So the ferrets will be able to shoot up onto that machine gun and the mill. Here it is, the ferret dance. The ferrets be ferrets. Heartseed's army's all split up. Is QQ just going to go for the mill? What is QQ doing? Okay, he's going to go for the mill, but there's no way he gets it. Like, that was an all in, all in gamble. And, I mean, the army was right there. I, I think Heartseed just wins off the back of that, right? I'll be amazed if Kuku can hold this. Kuku's lost his forward mill. He's supply blocked on his tier one. He's losing his forward warrens. Even if he got all of his current available army up, he uh, still would be behind. And he's up against ferrets, which are, as we've said, really good units for keeping your opponent down. And Hearts is even getting that campfire, so he's not vulnerable to a base race. I mean, it's a miracle, frankly, that QQ is still alive. Um, Heartseed, I'm pretty sure, could just click on the mill and win. But I don't blame him for trying to play it safe. QQ's ferrets have got a surprising amount of work done. Uh, largely just due to how long this fight has been. Oh, but he's even killed his opponent's ferret. Like, these ferrets have, are actually goated. Um, <laughs> but they can't do anything against the falcons. And that's going to be GG. Good effort. Um, I just... QQ didn't need to go for that all in. He was ahead. He didn't need to try and rush the base. Still, 2-1 two, two win for QQ. And that takes us to our last game. Our last set. QQ versus Studios. Okay, so QQ. Squirrel, Toad, Ferret, Owl, Machine Gun, Balloon. Against Studios with Squirrel, Pigeon, Mole, Falcon, Skunk, Boar. So, Owl and Boar. 
now for QQ. Studio, 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 studios. He has the ball. Okay. Um, QQ is making himself vulnerable here. Studios has tempo on the army, and he has some moles. Is he going to try and push? I think he should, but he's not. Probably wouldn't have worked. It would have been very tight. I think you could have at least got a Warren. Okay, so. Map seems fair enough. I don't like this mill. Um, and this one's kind of inconvenient. But they are both manageable for QQ. But QQ is expanding forwards anyway. This is a very aggressive expansion. Can he hold on to it? It's going to depend how good these toe hits are. Pretty good. That was pretty good. But he can't set up defences here because he's building his tier 2. So he's going to have to do that again. He's even farming on this base. I think two farms is too much. Like you're still supply blocked. And if he does secure this base then he wins. Why is he giving it up? He just like threw away his toad set and let his ferret get hand get uh, absolutely blasted. He didn't even get to sell on the sell in the mill. This is GG I think. I don't think QQ manages to hold this. I think a squirrel mole push just comes in. Oh this is clever. Studio is recognizing he can hit from the uh, other the plateau from across the woods to just plink away at these warrens from a safe distance. Uh, that was a big Miss Micro, I imagine, from QQ over here. Um, a big blunder. He still has his tier 2 up, so maybe he can make something happen with those. But ferrets aren't... Ferrets struggle at, you know... To, to get your way back into the game by ferret shooting tier 1s over and over again is possible, but it's not easy. I like that he kept his ferrets there, though, to uh, watch for the same plateau harassment, the same tactic. But he needs his squirrels on the front line. He's, he's leaving his squirrels there. He's left his squirrels all the way up there when he's being attacked down here. And that means he loses his ferrets again. He does hold back the attack though. 
He's not going to get this squirrel. It's it's on the road. Yeah, squirrel's going to get away with one HP. And QQ is actually ahead in eco here. Like, Studios hasn't expanded this entire time. Um, QQ has one farm on this mill. If he can just hold here, um, he's actually got a shot of winning this. <coughs> Machine guns come up a bit slow, but they do come up. He's going for another farm? Why? You don't need another farm. You need units so you don't die. Like, this is the second time QQ's been in a situation where he just needs to hold the position to win, but he's throwing that into chaos by trying to build farms. And he's pulling his squirrels back when he needs to be focus firing the falcons. Uh, how long do studios have left on this farm? Not long. QQ is whittling away at those units. Studios is starving. Can you focus down the uh, falcons? Studio surrendered. Oh, QQ must be feeling... Must have been so surprised when that happened. He probably thought he was about to die. Because he hasn't had a chance to scout his opponent for ages. And if you were Studios there, you shouldn't have surrendered. It was completely realistic that he had enough time to uh, kill that army and kill QQ's mills. And as long as you've got 20 seconds left, you can build a mill. And then you can put a farm on it to stop the starvation. He had the time to do that. I think that was too quick a surrender for studios there. So this is... Um, I can't quite remember who won game one but I'm pretty sure it was QQ so QQ is on track for a 3-0 here uh, studio is taking a very weird build squirrel mole mine machine gun balloon artillery very strange as well when you consider that QQ's run been running um, ferrets every game so why would you go for loads of defensive structures yeah I agree he, he could have probably destroyed the expansion that would put QQ in starvation um, and then studios could just go back sell a tier 1 warren and have enough food to get the mill up with a farm on it um, big mistake I think on studios part Um, QQ trying to do this proxy mail bullshit, but instantly gets scouted by studios. He just puts a machine gun down and says, piss off. Okay. Mole play. This is a... I mean, threatens a quick mail. Can't really get over to either the building farms or... The ferret warren. So the selling was correct. Now Studios is finally taking this mill. I say finally, it's not even the two minute mark yet. Um, it looks like QQ's just going to lose because he went ferret first, um, which is an odd decision. Okay, a squirrel has come out. That's a dead farm. But two tier two units up. Okay, QQ is holding. Get another squirrel run down there. That's good, that's good. Getting defences up. The ferrets actually uh, are doing pretty well against the moles. The fact that they can kill the moles in one shot <coughs> is 
is actually uh, coming in handy. Well, he had a mine. QQ doesn't know that there aren't other mines on the field, but he should feel comfortable. The m one mine isn't going to kill his ferrets. So I would be poking if I were him. But once he gets here, he has to do it up the high ground, and he doesn't have any high ground vision. So that makes it difficult. He'd have to use his commander, which doesn't quite have the health at this point to just stand up there um, and tank the hits for vision. So it'd be tricky. Is that going to be a balloon? Yes. It's not particularly useful. Um, because studios can just walk around. Uh, but it looks good. Also, it might actually give him high ground vision. I don't know if the balloon's vision stretches that far, but we'll see. No. It's just shy. Apparently there's an arty cannon behind that tree that I didn't notice. That is very sneakily hidden. But uh, does QQ not have vision on that? I don't think he does. That balloon is one tile short. But he can fix that. He can just put... Now that he's got these machine guns here, he can just put a balloon up in front of them. And that will give him the vision he needs. Or he can go back and put down two owls. Now that he's confident he can hold. He's actually sold the ferrets. Um, which I don't think was the right choice. He's missed He's missed all of those moles. That's a big blunder on the scouting. Because these moles are going to get in behind the defences. And QQ only has a handful of squirrels. Oh my god, QQ is just playing into it. Oh my god, he sees it. But can he do anything about it? Okay, he can, he can kite pretty efficiently here. Yeah, so that's good that he sold all of those because, I mean, the, the squirrels are winning this. Um, but they just couldn't win in time to stop that. Um, so, good sell by QQ. Cut his losses immensely. It's so lucky that he just saw that. But it was pretty unlucky that he missed it the first time. But goddamn, QQ was set up for failure there. If those moles had been able to come in and get this mill with like six farms on it, just for free... Oh my god, it would have been devastating. But now, did Studios ever... Studios never scouted these owls. So he doesn't know that it's coming. Uh, he's behind on Eco. He's behind... He'll be ahead on Army, but only barely. And he's actually losing a lot to this balloon. And now the... He's just rushing the mill with his moles, but he's not going to get it. And I think that means a clean sweep for QQ. QQ, like, nearly lost the game there when he sold so much of his army to get a third mill and double tier three. But Studios just never scouted it in time. First series 3-0? No, we've had others. Um, maybe for QQ, though. But we've definitely had clean sweeps before. We've had clean sweeps today. Fleur Fleur 3 0 Collaroo just earlier on. Um, but yeah, Studios Studios had could have won game 2 if he hadn't surrendered as soon as he hit the starvation timer because QQ was on his last legs and had basically no army left. He could have won game three if he'd realized how much QQ had sold and attacked at the proper timing. I kind of forget what happened in game one. 
Um, wait, this was a salvation. Did I skip game two? Did I skip a game? I think I skipped a game. Okay, so it's 2-0 for QQ at the moment, and this is game three. So, um, map-wise, both players have an easy second, um, but thirds start to get tricky for studios. QQ has, I mean, QQ can come down here and sort of half ninja this, just on the assumption studios has no reason to go here. Or you can keep expanding, take this mill, move up. Um, is QQ going to be able to defend this? It looks like he is, yes. He's going to lose the machine gun, but... Oh, he's not going to lose the machine gun. Very well done, machine gun. Heroic bullet hive there. Double hours again. But QQ doesn't have much of a setup this time. He hasn't got the lead that he established last time. And Studios is going to scout it out much quicker. So, very different situation. Now, what's Studios' response going to be? Just put down a ball? I don't know about that. One boar is going to struggle against two owls. You can't just rely on a boar to handle the owl. Like the mice are tanky and they're quick, which means they uh, can survive in the fire a long time and they can run out of it quickly as well. So they're not even fully cooking. They they will surround the boar, force it to split up its fire, and it they will whittle it down surprisingly quickly because the boar's tanky but the mice do a lot of damage um, I've seen many a player assume that a boar will be enough to carry them through the owl because hey mice are basically tier one right but it doesn't quite work that way um, a boar is good at like killing the first wave but you do need an army after that to support the boar and um, actually chase down the owls because the boar can't do anything to the owl itself which means it's one boar against infinite numbers of mice and eventually the mice will win that but both of these owls have come up uncontested Okay, 
So let's see how this goes. Oh, and as Studios goes for a scalp, QQ comes in with his mice. He's going to get a lot of value here. Kills like nine squirrels and a pig. That's pretty significant value. And by the time Studios runs across the map to attack, um, QQ will have completely refreshed his supply of mice. And he's got a tremendous defensive setup here with these two balloons on the corner. This is probably the weakest point where uh, Studios is attacking. It was just one machine gun. Um, but because QQ is now on this side, he can threaten to just go for the mill, which forces Studios to move over. And I mean, QQ is just taking his squirrels over and going to attack the mill. And I mean, yeah, why wouldn't he? He can just do that. And then he's going to burrow back and try micro at home. Um, he doesn't have anything here that can actually shoot up and kill the Falcons. But does he need to? The balloons are actually doing a lot of damage to it. The mill is done over on studio side. I was about to go back and watch it. Um, but yeah, Studios just took way too much damage. Uh, he lost too much in that base race. I mean... Yeah, the owls were still up and the boar was dead. There was no real way for Studios to come back from that. So yeah, it was a 3-0 sweep. Okay. Now that's all of Group B and Group C, um, and that's all the games that I've got tonight. Tomorrow is the PBC, which I'll be doing, but there's also the rest, like the remainder of the games, which are um, last games in Group D, which is a group I'm in. So some of my games should be over there. And then we will be on to the next stage of the tournament. <sighs> Whatever the hell that means. Uh, okay, so apparently treasure ownership changes. Uh, the investigation contest closes. And the lottery start. And then... Um, the scores will be revealed and the top two teams will advance to the dessert course. Um, so check out Dell stream tomorrow. Be here either before or after for the PBC and have a good night. Thank you for coming everybody and I will see you then. Uh, thank you Moccacino. I'm feeling pretty good about this. This has been my best tournament performance in a while. Um, anyway, so yeah, see you tomorrow. Toodles.